Canada maintains the Global Maple Syrup Reserve. This reserve is a series of warehouses that at one time held 77% of the world's yearly supply of syrup. In 2011, five men pulled off one of the largest heists in Canadian history by stealing over 3,000 tons of maple syrup. The crime was so unique, $18 million worth of maple syrup was stolen from a storage warehouse. Yet despite all the money there was to be made from the heist, the real reason for the theft was much more personal. The Federation of Quebec Maple Syrup Producers manages the Maple Syrup Reserve. In 2011, they rented a new warehouse for storage in a small town just north of Montreal. The warehouse was owned by the wife of Avik Caron, who had previously been charged for fraud. Avik saw the warehouse as an opportunity for a new scheme. Avik decided to contact one of his truck drivers, Sebastian Jutras. Sebastian had worked with Avik before as a driver and was happy to transport the syrup. He even introduced Avik to Richard Vallier and his father. Both men had been selling syrup for years and were familiar with the market. Both happily agreed to join as well. The plan was in place. The men rented a portion of the warehouse to prevent any suspicion as to why they'd be there late at night. Using forklifts, they would load barrels of the syrup onto Jutras' truck. The barrels were then transported to a remote shack where they could siphon the syrup into their own barrels. They would then fill the Federation's barrels with water from a nearby creek to avoid suspicion and return them to the warehouse. From there, the men would sell syrup to Etienne St. Pierre, a syrup reseller in New Brunswick, to distribute it. The plan worked for months, but the men grew careless. They began to siphon syrup at the warehouse and left the barrels empty. In July of 2012, the Federation found the empty barrels during a routine inspection. What followed was an investigation that would take five months and captured international attention. After all, 9,571 barrels of syrup had been stolen without anyone having noticed. The investigation led to St. Pierre's syrup reselling operation in New Brunswick. St. Pierre had been under investigation by the Federation for years. So his suddenly increasing operation drew enough suspicion for investigators to seize his syrup and his list of buyers. Both the list and the syrup led back to the rest of the heist members. From there, police were able to put the pieces together quickly. All of the men were arrested and taken to trial for theft. All were charged as guilty. All received jail time and fines. Richard Vallier, the syrup reseller of the group, faced the brunt of the charges as the one orchestrating the selling off of the syrup. He was charged with theft, fraud, and trafficking stolen goods. His sentence was eight years in prison and a $9.4 million fine. Yet despite the arrests, there are some in Quebec that view the thieves as heroes. The men themselves even believe their actions were justified. Raymond Vallier, Richard's father, even announced during his hearing that stealing from thieves is not truly stealing. You see, each one of the thieves had history with the Federation and they weren't the only ones. Yes, the Federation helps to market and sell syrup for syrup producers. However, the Federation also limits how much these producers can sell, and they demand that all producers sell only to them. The Federation sets the prices for the syrup, and they've been known to confiscate materials and close down farmers who disagree with them. Many refer to them as the Maple Syrup Cartel. À la minute que une goutte d'eau sort de l'érable ici au Québec, c'est pas nous, c'est à la fédération. This has created a maple syrup black market, of which many of the heist members were previously involved. The Vallier family were barrel rollers, helping syrup producers illegally sell syrup outside of the Federation. Saint Pierre had helped Quebec maple producers by buying directly from them instead of the Federation. Even the charges were disputed by local courts and the public. The fines were meant to reflect the cost of the lost syrup. But how can that be fair when the Federation is the one that sets the prices? In the aftermath of the heist, the Federation has come under a lot of fire. What are the Federation's thoughts? It's like the, the highway speed limit we put uh, on our street, basically in our system, like to make sure that the, there's less accident and the traffic is flowing. Basically, we have to put some rules. Uh, we, we are organized societies. So that's why people need th those rules to make sure that everybody is, is equity between everybody. Basically.